And that's Soja Go, Soja Come, and it's from Eno Barone, and it features Ken Paluta. We've been trying to speak to Eno, but the network, network is very, very bad, and I think they've joined us on phone. Hello, Eno. Hello. Eno, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so let's just start the conversation. I know you're trying very hard to get into the studio, and we really, really appreciate that. But then let's have the conversation that we've all, even if you're here, we'll have. I mean, you have been enjoying the fact that you are the king of rap, uh, mother of all raps, queen of bars, and everything. How have you been enjoying this ride so far in your journey? Um, I don't think it was enjoyment from the... I don't think it's, it, it's enjoyment. Mm -hmm. It is... It is um, like hard work that has pushed me to where I am that my fans feel like they need to like call me these titles. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a jo enjoyment. Okay. You know, it is, it is like something when people call you names, you need to keep up. Mm -hmm. And so with all this, it makes it even more challenging. So I don't think it's enjoyment at all. It's actually a headache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But but it, but you know that um, would you say it puts pressure on you to actually do more because everyone is looking at Eno Baroni? Yes, it puts a lot of pressure on you because um, you can be called King of Queens for no reason. Yeah. You need to prove it. You need to look it. You need to act it. And so when I, when I came in the space and everybody was like, "Hey, she's the yes and twelve of our time," yeah, I needed to be the yes and twelve of our time. They started calling me the king amongst the queens. Mm -hmm. I needed to be that. When I became the mother of fact, the rap goddess of Africa, not just Ghana, I needed to yeah. be that as well. And I needed to like work more. So if people call you titles and then you are relaxed, then you are like enjoying, oh, they say I'm different, so I need to sit down. Somebody else will be hard working and the person might take those titles for me. I mean, it's just the title. It mm -hmm. doesn't bring money, but then it's your work that will speak for you yeah. and make you get paid. So yeah. it is pressure. Yeah. yeah, but someone who asks, why would you even choose to be in a super a male dominated genre in the first place? I don't think I chose to be here. I think Rob chose me to be mm -hmm. there. <laughs> and I think the music industry in Ghana is a beautiful one. Mm -hmm. Then it was lacking somebody like me. And then food without salt is tasteless. So I mean, I made it complete. Yeah. So can we say that, you know, King of Queens, is it because of the fact that it's a male-dominated industry and you find yourself in, first of all, is that how you got the King, uh, the Queen of Queens from there? No, yeah, you see, there are lots of queens. I'm not right. the only female doing this. Rapper, right. Yes, there are lots of queens, but among the queens, I rather... You are a king among the queens. Yes. Okay, but how easy has it been? I mean, the fact that you are coming from a background where, you know, uh, spirituality and your artistic work, how are you able to balance both? It wasn't easy from the beginning because, right. I mean, my kind is rare. Nobody has actually seen any female doing hip-hop like I do in Ghana, like how I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I didn't really... I mean, there were females. Miss Bell was a rapper. Mm -hmm. and I was uh, like doing hip dance sort of thing. But then mm -hmm. the female going hard like the hip of the rap that I, I was doing, it was nothing like that for me to pinpoint and tell my dad and my mom that I'm going to be like this person. You know, so they were just thinking I was just going to be a rascal. So mm -hmm. you are not allowed to do it for a woman go to school, get married, mm -hmm. get a job. That was it. So I had to hide to do it. So it got to that point that I have proven myself to not just to myself but to my family that um it was a passion that I turned into a career and then it doesn't it doesn't take anything away from my personality as their child. Okay. Have you also had to face any form of negativity in the industry? Uh, especially, you know, we already note that this is a very male-dominated industry. As a female, as an artist, have you faced any negativity through the years that you have been doing music? And how, if so, how were you able to overcome that? It's been 10 years. Not everybody will love me. Yeah. And if, even if everybody loves me, then it means people are lying to me. Because I need to have people who criticize at some points. People will dislike something. So definitely, there are some people who actually like you for no reason at all, too. And in the beginning, I wasn't really understanding why people were just trolling me at some points or for some reasons and stuff. But then I got to understand the point that not everybody will like anything I do. 
Um, even if I do positive or negative, people will still talk. So let me just be me. When people advise, I take it. When people criticize for no reason, I just keep quiet and I let it slide. That's it. But in being you, you know, I understand that you love rap. You've been doing rap for a very long time, a decade. Now, after a decade, are you moved? Because we have Afrobeat that has been dominant at the moment. Are you moved to be able to shape to suit the people? Or is it rap and it's going to be rap for life? You know? Yes, I'm a rapper. But then I haven't stopped rapping. And then we, we as Ghanaians, we have hip life yeah. here. And then I have like a, a big audience to appeal to so along the years i don't just pick a beat and i just rap i have yeah. come, i have like songs where you feel the normal Ghanaian yeah. highlight yeah. With, with the rap just as obrafo was doing just like ochami kwame was doing mm -hmm. just like everybody was doing i also do that so i have lots of songs lots of collaborations which you know you feel the rhythm you can dance to it and everything it's not just hip-hop strict hip-hop about me I am versatile and I do everything. So along the years, even after 10 years, I'm still going to be versatile. Interesting. You know, in mm. that 10 years, yeah. it's, it's, it's a very long time, and I must commend you for that. In the course of acceptance, um, at what point did you see and feel that the people that are supporting you are actually being supportive in terms of playlisting, your streaming, and your viewership with regards to your music? At what time did you see that you have arrived? People love you and they want to support you. Um, I, 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 I see, you know, like I feel like people love me from day one. You know, I'm saying that um, I thought I was a nobody just doing my thing. And so even right from the times where I was doing my freestyles, when people just like five callers are allowed and then four of the callers would be like, oh, we vote for Eno. That's love. Mm -hmm. Because um, not even my family members had the time to listen and pick phone to support me. But if somebody who knows me from nowhere has the time to call me, I felt like I was loved from day one. But then... Um, it wasn't going as I thought it was going to be because I thought, oh, because everybody loves me, I'm just going to blow. And when it wasn't going smooth, I started feeling like, yo, this is the wrong thing. I have been to school. Let me just put this thing down, just get my certificate, go get a job or something to do. So I think at the point I, I wrote on Facebook that I was done with music. And then after that day when I wrote that thing, the next day my, my timeline was flooded with messages. Because people were like, we don't want you to be done. We love you and this and this. And so I was like, so I have all these people watching and they don't even comment or like anything. Mm. That is when I started like feeling like, so I have a fan base and people are watching me, then I need to really do something. Of course, when you're doing anything, people are watching, but they might not say anything until you wrong somebody. That is when you realize people are watching. So I see the support and I feel the love and I always appreciate it. Yeah. And in the course of your journey, I mean, you are, you've impacted in Ghana, you've gone beyond uh, Africa, and also you got the recognition, and you were also featured in the BBC Africa Hip Life Rewind uh, documentary, an amazing yeah. documentary as such, I will say. After everything was documented, when you watched it, what was your reaction with regards to how Hip Life from Ghana has been uh, represented or in the course of documentation, how well did we do in telling our story? Um, I think we as, we as people have to tell our story more. And you see, when BBC came and they Nobody. documented that and put it out, I mean, I feel like it's a step. Because Hip Life, Hip Life has been there for decades. So whichever way that it was presented, me, I don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. But then I feel like if we tell our story well, nobody will come and tell it for us. There are so many Ghanaians out there. And if we represent ourselves with our hip life, I'm not saying nobody should listen to Afrobeat mm -hmm. or jump to it. But the same way Afrobeat is sweet and we are always like, um, the video has done this and we are all on that one post just to go and see it. If we also tell our story about our art as well, nobody will come and tell it for us in any way that we might think we were misrepresented, but thank God I'm here. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Have you know, met with you now? Yeah. So somebody. Oh, okay. Before Helen yeah. comes okay. in, I, I wanted to ask a follow up for this. When we talk about hip life in Ghana, it has shaped our music industry to a front where it has been influenced and it has really shaped many artists. Would you say that today's generation uh, that are trying to go into hip life, they want to do rap music? Do you feel today's generation actually understand the relevance or the impact hip life has had on the Ghana music industry? Um, the Ghana music industry, I feel like hip life made Ghana music industry. Even though high life is our thing, um, when uh, young young ones were coming out, people were actually moved by the fact that they were thinking high life was just old men, old women thing. Mm -hmm. And then by then, I think I was a baby by then, but then rap was dominating the country. And so yeah. if you want to feel like you're a G or something, you need to rap. So kudos to like people like Reggie Rockstone who made hip life a thing for us and made it suitable. But then along the line, you could see the hip, the high life thing kind of like going away. But then right now, everybody is back to high life yeah. and hip life. And it's it's about time we all accept that this is ours. Yeah, people will still prefer other things, but then I feel like even if you listen to our rhythms and things that are going on now and what we are jamming to, even the drill and stuff, it still has a bit of hip life and high life in there. Okay, that's quite interesting. But, you know, in this industry, we understand that a lot of things happen. And I'm wondering how you are able to take care of your physical health and also your mental health. How are you able to deal with this too? Maybe God, oh, I think it's just God that is holding me down. Wow. And then also, I try to do my best to take care of myself. You yeah. know, because... Um, your call has been put on hold. Please... <laughs> A rather unfortunate situation there, oh, oh, but oh, I oh. hope and no, by this time I'm hoping that Eno really is already in the studio, saying, right? It's a lot, yeah, a lot, to bottle, a lot. like bottle in, yeah, being a female artist, absolutely, mentally, physically, how yeah. she's able to. Oh, this too next bad, work. too bad. And we were supposed to also touch on the fact that uh, she's dropping a mm. whole project. Um, a 10 track project and it's titled mm -hmm. No Mano and the intro is already out, the yeah. second track is already out and that is Soja Go Soja Come and it features Ken Paluta. We're hoping to get more information for that and also she has actually promised a documentary for her fans. I wanted to also find out if it was, uh, if, if that is also in the pipeline 2024, mm -hmm. she's going to give us that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know for that. But I don't know if we could get her back online or, okay, okay. The call has dropped, and okay, yeah, we are trying. <laughs> Maybe we could have a music, a, a, any music form, you know. I want us to play Warning, because that's the track she's actually been nominated for Best Rap Performance, at, uh, which is the upcoming 2024 TGMA. If we could get that track, okay. Okay, let's, let's listen to any music. Hopefully, she'll get back on the line and then we'll just touch on her projects and then we'll wrap up the show. Work for the positions they occupy, but no low keys and fuck their way to the top. Your hard work will bring the win, but don't worry about the win. No BFD in the family with stolen bread, but seen as bread winner. Once you out there. Okay, so guess who is now in the <laughs> studio? It's none other than me. I want to mention your government's name. I'm coming. Ruth Eno Ajoa Amankwa Adom, a.k.a. Eno Barani, is in the building. Yeah. It's good to see you. Sorry Thanks. for stressing you. Ed. Thanks for having me. That I had to good. be here. So I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll take it from where we left it. And uh, I was asking you about how you are able to handle both your physical, uh, you know, health and also your mental health. Because in this industry, it seems a lot happens in here. So I would like to yeah. know how you are able to work it around, all of it. Yeah, so I think um, physically, I just do what I can do. Like, just mm -hmm. keep myself fit. In okay. a possible way, yeah. if I feel like eating this, I'll eat it. If I feel like burning that calorie, <laughs> I will. So, so, yeah, I don't really let people's pressure mm -hmm. weigh me down like that. And then, um, I really, I really try my best. I'm not perfect, but I really try my best not to put a lot of my personal life out there mm -hmm. because I feel like when people know it, that's when they are going to talk about it. Okay. So I just keep it low, and that's me. So when it happens, 
Sometimes I'm low, but nobody knows. Mm -hmm. I just smile through it. Yeah. But just because you touch on personal life and you're not wanting to put it out there, I'd like to find out from you. You see, some of your colleagues, your rap, because you're also a rapper, yeah. you know, uh, they put their things out there. And then when people talk about it, now they are not, some are now uh, somehow worried that why are people talking about it? But yeah. their things are out there. Do you think they should keep on putting their things out there or they should hide it? What should be the way forward, really? I feel like everybody on what works for them. Mm. You know, somebody might like to speak about themselves out there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how it's going to happen for me for the rest of my life. Maybe I'm going to be out there change, or not. Right? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> everybody on what works for them at a particular time. So I'm not going to actually blame anybody for saying mm. this or that. No. You see, if you're in the public eye, some people sometimes forget you are human. And so certain things that they will say to you, they might not even say to a family member, but then True. they will say it to you and it hurts. That is why they always say, yeah, it's like they brought this issue, but when you say it, it kind of hurts them. But at the end of the day, I don't want that. That mm -hmm. is why I keep mine private. So there are certain things that are personal that you might not be able to hide it. Let's say if I get married and I yeah. have kids, I might not be able to hide right. my kids, you know. Mm -hmm. So anything can happen, yeah. Real and well in one of your, your uh, Instagram posts, the caption said, be happy with the little progress uh, that you are making. Making. Yes. Don't and compare yourself to anyone. Exactly. Most are just faking. Exactly. And yeah. even in her rap, she said that, yeah. you go and all that. I think you have a lot of bass in yes. your rap. Yeah. You said, but bro, so that's, I bet you will not go do a pedicure. Yeah. Like, yeah. you have too much bass. How Thank are you, you able to come up with all the, those lines? Um, life itself mm -hmm. inspires me. Okay. Because um, I've been through it at some point because um, without experience, you don't have a story. Yeah. So I have been through certain phases of life and then I have seen things by myself. I've seen friends mm -hmm. go through certain things. I've seen different people, even people in the industry, go, mm -hmm. things, go through things. And I have learned from those things and I'm still learning because things keep happening at yeah. all times. So me, I might come here today and I know I will not have anything to say. Even if you ask me to freestyle, I don't know if I have anything to say. Mm -hmm. But when I get home, sometimes whatever that happens, happened, actually click back and I make music out of it. So and you are how it is. one artist who actually gets bombarded, mm -hmm. both from maybe a female artist entering the space with yeah. rap or even a male artist yeah. who will also throw shade and jabs at you. Yeah. Even to what happened to Sakode, he has mm -hmm. dropped his song, brag, he's bragging, but then people are questioning and doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. For your side, yeah. when these shots are coming from both female, both male, how do you consume it? How do you channel it into something amazing? So I, I realized something. You see when there's a tree let's say a mango tree, and it has good fruits, and the mango is very sweet. You always see kids under the tree throwing stones, <laughs> using sticks to chew and everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. even seeing that, right? Yeah. So it makes me know that I'm sweet. Like, they all want to have a taste <laughs> yeah, of me. Right. Yeah, that's why they all do that. I like how yeah. she puts it and yes, how she takes it. Exactly. Because someone might take it wrong. Yeah, then, you know? and you also have said mm -hmm. in, I think I watched a couple of yeah. interviews yeah. where you actually also said that, Anytime you are in a trauma or you are down, that is when we get the best of you. Yeah, yeah. Why is that so? How are you able to do that? Um, I don't have much friends. Hmm? And I am not really someone who goes out. Like, I'm hardly seen hmm? outside. Yeah. So when it's like that, it's just left with me, myself, and my God. So... Yeah, when I have to cry, I let it out. But then I have to put myself more in work to get healed. Yeah. And the work is the only thing I actually know much. So it's like the more I'm putting myself out there, yeah. the more I'm putting things down, like I'm producing music back to back. Yeah. That is why whenever I am down, I get it's like sometimes the experience that I'm going through actually gives me something good exactly. to write. Yeah. So sometimes if a musician talks about heartbreak, can we say that indeed they are going through that? Yeah, at that, at it could point? be. It yeah. could be. Wow. Yeah. What interesting. But, but you should know mm. that people love you. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, like yeah. a lot. I, I kept saying we should play warning. Yeah. And one of the songs that is played in my house often is mm. Heavy Load. Yeah. Mm. And my brother loves it so much. You see, and that's even an example of okay. uh, yeah. what I was talking mm -hmm. about. Because right. people used to like bombard me about and say, mm. hey, you are fat, mm -hmm. you are this, you are mm -hmm. this. And in the times where I was feeling like I had a low self-esteem, mm -hmm. that's when I wrote that song. 
Wow. Yeah. And that's loved by people. People yeah. can actually resonate with it. Yeah. The message in there is very clear and yeah. like it's so good. You see, with this, your whole bars, you have conquered from Kumasi to Tema to Ghana to Africa. Yeah. I know you're going to conquer the world too. Amen. I wish that I'm one day going to get up and see that BET Hip Hop Awards cipher in Ubaroni is part. What do you and think beyond, about that? And beyond. Yes. Yeah, your wishes what what will do you come think true. about that? Like your the wish, cipher? Your wishes will come true. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But then let's touch on the project. Yeah. No Manual. Yeah. And already the, t- the intro, mm. which is also No Manual, it's a banger. Yeah. With Paluta, with Soja Come, Soja Go. Yeah. It's crazy. Now, these two songs are already making waves. And there are 10 tracks that they're yeah. going to give to Ghanaians. Yeah. And then the eight today, I can't imagine. <laughs> Seems there's too much to yes. 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 Too much speed. Yeah. Too much. Like, what, let, first Everything. of all, mm-hmm. what actually inspired this whole project in the first place? Yeah, so th- um, this year is my 10th year in mm-hmm. the game. And um, commercially, it's my 10th year. But I, I've been rapping since, since yeah. you know. But then... Um, I see a lot of people, you know, what do you have for the upcoming ones? Mm -hmm. You know, you see, I might advise you, but my advice might not work for you. Okay. Mm. You know, because your experience might be different from mine. Yeah. I used to feel like because um, a female rapper that I look up to, maybe outside Ghana Mm -hmm. did this, maybe I have to do this, but it Mm -hmm. might not work for me. So I lived my life based on the journey, like whatever that comes, Mm -hmm. I accept and then I move on with Mm -hmm. it. So I put everything that I have been through into my music mm-hmm, and yeah. then listen to it. This is no man. I came, I wasn't guided. There mm-hmm. was no manual okay. for me to know that this game, when it gets to this point, take this map and pass it. Yeah. No, I never had that. Yeah. I was just going. Mm-hmm. So there was no manual to it. So when I was performing, if this happened, I have put in it in my music. Mm-hmm. When I was writing music, at this point, this happened. I've put in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I fell in love here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got heartbroken here. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I met this person. Here. And, and that's all I've put in together for a 10-track album. Yeah. And I'm putting out there. So just like writing a book, I'm mm-hmm. writing my album. But yeah. I mean, listening to that, I think it would be difficult for you to advise a young rapper. If we say, oh, a young rapper is upcoming, tell us something. Should she really come into this industry or she shouldn't? From what you are saying, it seems you might not be able to tell her anything. No, I, I still can't tell you something. Mm-hmm. I cannot okay. tell you that you need to do this or that, but have a reason, your okay. own personal reason why you want to come. Mm. And then that that reason should be the reason why you are here. And that reason should be the reason why you never want to give up. Even if you feel like giving up, remember that reason why you started. Yeah. Okay. So before we continue, uh, since the beginning of this conversation, mm-hmm. I've been saying that, can producer please play warning? Please, please play. Finally, warning is here. <laughs> Let's enjoy that. And then when we come back, we'll talk more about the project. Who you behind bars? Us rap no get respect. And for one no agenda, anybody go fit through a punch. We're living on the land with no laws, no man's land. 2021, uh, and that's was VGMA. You got the rap performance of the year. Yes, and it was among heavyweight men. Yeah. Amarado, uh, Joy B, Medical, mm-hmm. Sarkozy, and Strongman. This year, too, you are the only female among six gentlemen. Mm-hmm. And this is the song that we are hoping we will take. And I was there. <laughs> Amen. And I was there. Oh, oh anything no, can happen. No, I've been hyping this for a long time. <laughs> and that, I, I expected some yeah. more confidence. No, no, I think I relax. <laughs> she's, you see, right. she, mm. she is. Mm. If you see her, yeah. she's very introverted. Right. But when she's in the studio, I'm right. guessing that because listen to the bars of that day, like exactly, yo, exactly. <laughs> that's too much. But yeah. um, the project, when is yeah. it finally mm. going to come out? Like the whole track. Yeah. So. Um, I'm going to release some singles of it before mm-hmm. the whole mm-hmm. album is mm-hmm. drop. Mm-hmm. Uh, my management was talking about maybe October since it's going to be the 10th month and it's actually my birth month as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. So maybe October, maybe if I'm a whole premise, I'm here do it before October. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, we're going to like get singles of it before okay. the whole thing drop. Yeah. yeah. You've dropped the project before and this mm-hmm. is a brand new one. I will ask yeah. you, when you started 
throughout the 10 years in your journey, I mean, there are certain things that you are maybe doing differently in line. Now, mm. as in your punches, your wordplay, everything has changed. What are some of the things that maybe in your previous project we could hear that Eno was saying this, was doing this, that coming into this new project, maybe yeah. you have enhanced it, you have changed it, yeah. or we are going to feel a new, like, wordplay, bars, yeah. or what are some of the things that has well. changed? I think in the beginning of my pro- like my career, I was doing more of chi, mm-hmm. and it got to the point where I was doing like ninety, eighty percent English mm-hmm. because I I felt like I had audience out there to yeah. appeal. But then now I feel like even no 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 we don't understand, but people are still like <laughs> right, you know. So I mean, music is a spirit. Whatever mm-hmm. comes, I put it down mm-hmm. and I give it to the fans. Mm-hmm. So if it comes and it's a chi project, I put it out there. Mm-hmm. If it comes and it's a mix. English thing or yeah. all English mm-hmm. thing, I'm going to put it out there. It mm-hmm. depends on the promotional mm-hmm. strategy. Yeah. yeah. But with this very one, what is it? Is it more of the... So I think the intro to the album had yeah. about 95% English. English, yeah. Okay. And the one with Paluta has mm-hmm. about 80% Chi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, the, the okay. dynamics yeah. is good. good. Yeah. But since you have um, conquered Africa, conquered even, you want to go beyond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you, what are some of the strategies that you and your team have actually sat down to talk about. I'm sure the project is part. What are other yeah. things that you are seeing? Because you've already conquered Ghana. You are still yeah. wearing the crown. Yeah. So what are some of the strategies that are in the pipeline that hopefully a year or two will be seen in Ubaroni do? Um, I think we started with collaborations. Mm-hmm. That's what we started doing. Because after we had Afrima, my name was ringing, the bell, uh, ringing a bell in some of the artists' ears. So mm-hmm. I just touched on that. I mean, I had a feature from Puerto Rico, I had a feature from Liberia, I had mm-hmm. a feature from South Africa, and mm-hmm. I'm doing that yeah. small, small, small. Like, we just put everything together and then give some of mine to you. Mm-hmm. And then those who have come to feature me, to mm-hmm. the more they play their songs in their hometowns, yeah. the more I'm also going to get projected out there. Yeah. When, when marriage, family, children comes into play, mm-hmm. we yeah. miss the Eno Baroni that we have enjoyed for the past 10 years. I hope not. Yeah. Um, I pray it doesn't happen like that. I mean, I love kids. Okay. When somebody's child is with me, mm-hmm. I spend my whole time around the child. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how I'm going to actually act around my children because I want to give them time and space. But I hope it doesn't sway me out of music because, no, the music is me. You love kids there. I'm sure you'll be swayed away and we'll be missing you. <laughs> so are we to pray that, no, you shouldn't go into family now or not because... We are already worried. No, don't be worried. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but are you confident that, you know, rap is, is, I don't know what your plans are, where you want to go with the rap, but are you confident that rap is going to take you wherever or you are going to hope, like I asked you early on, that yeah. Afrobeat is in the other genres, yeah. putting a mixture together? You see, this studio is so expensive, right? Without <laughs> rap, I wouldn't have been here. <laughs> the rap is actually going to take me everywhere. Yeah. 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 Good, we are so yeah. wrapping up very, yeah. very soon. But there's also a track that yeah. I enjoyed uh, on your uh, Apple Playlist mm. page. That is yeah. the, fi- the, the f- finish, finish line, line mm. with, with Amaradu. Amaradu. Yeah. 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 yeah, And you dropped that recently. It was last year. It was last year. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no, two years no, ago. No, we two, are in 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, two years so ago, yeah. me seeing it there, I was mm. a bit skeptical yeah. that how come like it's you still didn't there. See this, yes. yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm coming to the fight that you see... When we talk about rap, yeah. you you are fighting with the gentleman to yeah. actually be in that space. Yeah. But at the long run, we've we've had a Brwanana, we've mm-hmm. had massive females that have actually paved the way. For you, what do you see as that long-term legacy that you want to leave, even though you have done a lot? Yeah. But personally for you, as an individual, as an yeah. artist, what do you hope to be that legacy that Inu Baroni leaves behind? Have you realized any time there's a conversation sparked about rap or beef or anything, my name pops out for no reason when I haven't done anything? Mm. Yeah, it's because I have left a legacy and then I have... I'm the first female to ever win every award Mm -hmm. I have won. Mm -hmm. Not just in Ghana. Even the ones I won in Africa, Mm -hmm. I'm the first female to ever win it. And then it was like bridging the gap between the females and the Mm -hmm. males. And so even if after my death, my name is still going to be mentioned... So that one is not to brag, but let's brag. It is what it is. (laughs) It is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had a fantastic... I think today's show started somewhere, but it's been very, very great having a conversation with you. And we wish you nothing but the best, especially coming 1st June 20. 
24, you are going to pick that cat. Let's hope. Let's add it so that it becomes <laughs> yeah, confidence for us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to. We have to. Right. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you very much.